By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are bringing you the semi-finals of the Dwarven Warriors Cup in the Netherlands. This is an alpha, beta only tournament. And in the semi-finals, we're seeing two really good decks that we've also seen in the Swiss round. On the left, we have Ron playing Mono Black. And I mean, his deck really made a strong impression. He's playing with Icy Manipulator. I know it's not black, but it's a really strong artifact. That's why I'm starting the list with naming Icy Manipulator. He's playing with the Brutal Card Mind Twist. He's playing, of course, with Hypnotic Specters. He's playing with Terrors, he's playing with Dark Rituals to Accelerate, he's playing with a Frozen Shade. We didn't see that in the Swiss round match, but hopefully we'll see some Frozen Shade action in this matchup. And he's taking on Tom, and Tom is also a player that we saw in the Swiss round, made a very good impression as well. He's playing with a red and a white deck, so he's playing with Savannah Lions, he's playing with Granite Gargoyle, he's playing with Sarah Angel. He also has a beautiful Wheel of Fortune, so hopefully he can cast that. Uh, again, and um, he's also playing with Lightning Bolts and starts to plow here. So it's, I mean, both of these decks are very strong. And again, it's it's looking at the color pie of Magic the Gathering, really looking at how the game once started. You've got your qualities in black, you've got your qualities in red and white. Um, for me personally, if I look at this, I would say red and white is a strong favorite just because it plays with two colors. It has a little bit more options, especially in removal. You know, it's got Swords to Plowsiers, it's got Lightning Bolt. On the other hand, I mean, Ron is playing not only with Black, he's also playing with some very strong and decisive artifacts. So, you know, and, and again, I'm going to mention Icy Manipulator because it just made such such a strong um, impact on the, on the board. And I know that Tom is playing with White, so he'll have some answers. You know, he, he'll have Disenchant, of course. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be a very exciting match. We saw a lot of 0-2s and 2-0 matches in the Dwarven Warriors Cup. And I think maybe, just maybe, this one will go all the way to three games here in the semifinals. Let's quickly go to game number one. Game number one, and we have Ron sitting on the left and Tom sitting on the right. And we can see a nice turn one Savannah lines here for Tom. So that's a good start. Let's see what Ron can do. Can he, for example, find a dark ritual? No, he cannot. Just playing a basic swamp passing turn here. That means he's probably going to take two damage here from the lions. And there's also a basic mountain from Tom. So that's a pretty good start here and another creature on the board more pressure in the form of a banalish hero 1-1 one, one banding creature and there for two black we see a black knight quick response here from tom with a lightning bolt that means that he can still continue attacking here black knight being a great blocker in this board state because of the first strike but it is gone that means three more damage here for ron dropping to 15 and the pressure is real now and there we see a brass claw orc and another banalish hero and Ron on the draw. And, and here you can see after only three turns, look at the amount of permanence on the side of Tom. I mean, he's got four creatures that can deal damage. He can ban them also next turn. Re uh, remember, both Manelish heroes can ban together and can ban with another creature as well. So potentially you can have a 4-4 bander attacking next turn if Ron can play out, let's say, another Black Knight. So then Tom still has an option to attack. And remember, with banding, Tom is the one who can decide how damage is dealt. But let's first see what Ron can do. Playing land number three, normally you would expect a Hypnotic Specter here, but with this board state, a Hippie is just not that impressive. And uh, he's asking to read the Brass Claw Orc. Now, Brass Claw Orc is a 2-2 two -two for one red and one, and it cannot block any creatures with power greater than one. So it's, it's an Orc, you know, Orcs, uh, they're not the bravest of the magic creatures and uh, they're not the bravest on Dominaria and you just need to use them to attack. That's basically what you need to do. As soon as you're in a position where you have to block with an orc, something's going wrong with your strategy. And here is, it looks like a black mana and there is a Paralyze and there is a Black Knight. So Paralyze on the Savannah Lions and this is interesting here because Savannah Lions only having one Toughness. Let's see if he's going to band. We talked about that before, and this is really old school magic here. Attacking in a band 
And interestingly enough is that Tom might as well have banned with his Benelish hero on top of the Benelish hero. So making it a 4-4 what I was talking about. That way he could have put even more pressure on Ron. But maybe he has something in hand that he wants to band with as a potential blocker next turn. Of course we cannot see these players hands so we don't really know why they make the decisions that they make. And uh, attacking now and Ron is really in the tank here. Is he going to block? If he blocks... Tom is at least going to lose a creature, probably the Benelish hero, because he has a Benelish hero. Um, you know, he has two of them. He has one untapped over there. Instead, he's just taking the damage, deciding not to block, so dropping to 17 here. And here we can really see how banding works. If if Tom wouldn't have had a banding creature and these Benelish heroes would have just been one once, he wouldn't have attacked. Oh, Dark Ritual here. Will we see a Sengir? Yes, Sengir Vampire hitting the board. And this creature is seeing a lot of action here at the Dwarven Warriors Cup. It's a beautiful creature. 4-4 four, four flyer for 2 black and 3. And if it blocks a creature or is blocked by a creature and the creature dies that turn, then it also gets a plus 1, plus 1 counter. Now that hardly ever happens, but sometimes it's relevant. And now it's interesting to see what Tom is going to do in terms of attack. He chooses to untap the Savannah Lines playing if he has a swords that would be absolutely perfect here he does have a swords to plows here oh and that's bad news for ron here i mean he does gain four life so he is going to 16 and life is time and again he's attacking in a band here banding with the savannah lines as a second attacker wouldn't be very smart because of the first strike of the black knight and black knight here is blocking this time as well and let's see how tom is going to divide the two damage and I think they're having a little discussion. The thing is, even in old school, banding is not a mechanic that you see a lot. And the nice thing about a format like Alpha Beta is, I think at least, that you see a lot of combat damage. It's more like combat is more important in Alpha Beta than it is in regular old school, uh, where you have much more trickery and also much more non-creature decks. So this is really, combat is really important. And therefore, uh, banding becomes a much stronger, um, a much stronger, thing to use in old school magic so they're discussing it right now what are we going to do here how are we going to block and ron is again looking at his hand weighing his options out am i going to basically trade my black knight for probably a banalish hero i think because tom has another one there so probably what tom's going to choose for is just to deal two full damage on the banalish hero and actually um, I just said it makes no sense to attack with the Savannah Lions, but if I'm not mistaken, he could have banded the Savannah Lions with his other Benelli hero, and then if Ron blocks, he could simply choose, Tom can choose to put all the damage, first strike damage from the Black Knight on the Benelli hero, and then deal two damage after that damage is being dealt with the Savannah Lions. And again, we see no block by Ron. That means he's going to drop to 13. He really doesn't want to make that trade. And I think... I wonder if that's the right decision because a 1-1 bander actually is quite strong here in old school. So he might as well, you know, have chosen to make the trade and think, okay, at least I get rid of one of the banders. Because remember, banding is also a great mechanic as uh, to block. It's actually stronger when you're blocking to have banding. And there is, oh, I like this card. This is really cool, a Nettling Imp, and we earlier saw that Sengir Vampire, and Sengir Vampire and Nettling Imp, they really make a nice pair, because Nettling Imp can force a creature to attack, and then you can let a, a small 1-1 one -one attack into your Sengir Vampire, and then pump your Sengir Vampire. That's a very classic old school combination. And again, we see an attack here by, by Tom, and again, he's dealing damage. He's now dealt nine damage with his banding combination. That's quite impressive, and here we also see a flyer for Tom. So things aren't looking great for Ron here. What he needs, Let's maybe first start with a terror to get rid of the gargoyle. And I believe Ron is top decking at the moment. No more creatures in hand. And here we could, we could also really see the strength of a white and red deck where you just have any of sorts to plow spheres and you have lightning bolt. So it's, it's almost like you've got double removal, especially in alpha beta where you see a lot of smaller creatures. So you can use your lightning bolts for the small stuff. And then you can keep your swords for the big stuff like the Sengir Vampire. It's quite ideal. And Ron hasn't really drawn into any removal. Well, he, he did draw into the Paralyze, but you see, Paralyze doesn't remove a creature from the game. It's a great tempo play, but it's not a long-term solution. Now let's see here. 
three mana step will we see like a hypnotic specter maybe okay there's a drain life for one i think that's a good choice drain life for one on the vanilla hero and it looks like he was not top decking at all by the way ron still has three cards in hand so he was just drawing into card number four it kind of looked like he was top decking and let's see it's also hard to kind of know how many cards Tom has. It seems he only has one. So that's at least an advantage for Ron. If he can get some mana, because he's not drawing any any land, by the way. And now he's forcing the Savannah line to attack. And I really like this line of play. I, yeah, again, personally, I think I would just ban it. But maybe, maybe it's my mistake of how banning works. Let me know in the comments below if it works, if he would ban the Savannah lines with the Benelish hero and he can then choose to put two damage on the Benelish and then deal two damage to the uh, to the Black Knight with the Savannah Alliance. Of course, the question it is if 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 you want to be in that position now because Tom only has one Benelish hero and no longer has two Benelish heroes. But yeah, let me know in the comments below if I'm right because I could be absolutely wrong. Banding is not um, a mechanic that I play with uh, a lot of times. And let's see what Ron's going to do now. He has found land number four, which can be quite crucial in the deck tech sec section. I kept talking about his mighty icy manipulators. He can actually play them out right now if he has them. Let's take a look. I mean, he is weighing his options. It looks like he's keeping one swamp separate. So maybe he wants to cast something for three. If he can simply find some more removal, he's kind of in the clear again. I mean, he's still on six. If he can... For example, play a Terror on the Gargoyle or a Drain Life or something that already gives him some more uh, some more space. And there we see that Icy Manipulator that I was talking about. But, ooh, there is a Swords. Interesting choice. Oh, of course, he cannot target Black Knight. Swords on the Netling Imp. That means he's going to gain a life again. He's going to go to 7. And next turn, the Icy Manipulator will be online. So this turn, Tom can still swing in for 5. And he's, he drew into a Swords to Plows here, which is not useful now, but it's also not bad because if Ron is going to play, for example, another Sengir, then he will have an answer for that. Attacking right now. Is he going to take five or is he finally going to block that banding combination? And the Brass Claw Orcs and that Banalish hero have done so much work together. Maybe they're in a relationship. That would be kind of weird, but yeah, who knows? <laughs> anyway, attacking it with the 3-3. Three, three. And there it goes in, 5 damage. So Ron is dropping to 2 here. And I mean, next turn, he mana number 5. If he plays a Sengir, we know that Tom has that Swords in hand, but then again, it will give Ron 4 more life. Let's see what he's going to do. Even if he does nothing, he can still stay alive next turn by tapping down the Gargoyle and blocking the Banding Combination. And there it is. There's a Sengir. Probably will we see a Swords here. But that, that means that Ron is going to go to 6. And then he can make that, that choice again. Am I going to block the Banding Combination? Or perhaps he's going to tap one of the two ground creatures. Although I think, you know... Oh, he's tapped out, of course. He's absolutely tapped out. That's true. He played the Sengir Vampire. He cannot use the IC anymore. So this is a really good swing here by Tom. And he's going He's going to one. He's still not going to block. Wow. I really expected him to, uh, to block now. He's not doing it. And uh, he's on one life. There was a Sarah Angel. There is another Swamp. If he has a Drain Life, he can actually drain the Sarah for four. Playing a Hypnotic Spectre, that's not too bad, actually. Um, it means that he can stay alive. Probably post-combat or pre-combat, I can see Ron tapping down the Sarah Angel. Tom indicating he wants to go to combat here. Ron responding, saying, I'm going to tap down your Sarah Angel. And there's an attack. Of course, he's not going to attack in a band. Oh, I'm, so <laughs> I'm, so I'm such a bad player. Of course, he's not going to attack in a band. I was just so used to seeing... Brasco, Orc, and Benalish here together. This was really an entertaining uh, first game. And I know, Ron, has been, you've been under pressure the whole game one, but it was not boring at all. I just think that Tom was really lucky in finding his answers. And that means Tom is winning this game number one. Let's let these players sideboard, because I think we're going to see some 
a lot of sideboard cards. White has a lot of boarding in against black, and black has a lot of boarding in against white. So this could be quite interesting in game number two. So we're going to let these players sideboard, and we'll catch up with them in game number two. Game number two here. And we saw that first victory by the red and white deck. That's the player sitting on the right named Tom. And he's showing his hand. Hard to see though. I saw a lightning bolt, I think, and something else. And he's playing against Ron sitting on the left with mono black. Has a pretty good start here with a soul ring passing turn. Let's see if Tom can find a one drop again. He's playing pretty aggressive. And there's again a Zavanna Lines. We saw the same thing in game number one. And let's see if Ron can find like a Black Knight, for example. And there is a Black Knight. 2 2 first striker. Perfect answer. Also protection from white. So this could be a big problem. But there is a lightning bolt. And again, it looks like Tom has the answer, just like he did in game number one. But at a certain point, he has to run out of answers. And I think Ron knows that. Tapping for three. Will we see? There's a Hypnotic Spectre. And let's see if Tom has an answer. If he doesn't have an answer, he may start discarding cards, which is not great. He does play with Granite Gargoyle, so perhaps he's going to cast a one right now. Tapping three here, and there is a Granite Gargoyle, so that's actually great here for Tom. And I wonder if Ron's going to attack. Remember, Granite Gargoyle has the ability for one red. It can get plus zero, plus O. Or will we see, for example, a Terror here? An Icy Manipulator tapping down the Gargoyle. I like that very aggressive move. And that means Tom is going to lose a card as well. Taking two damage and losing a card. And again, we see that uh, big power of the Icy Manipulator. is just such a strong card here. And look at that. He's losing a Sarah Angel. And he now has to deal or with the Hippie or with the Icy. Attacking with both, dropping to 12, probably means he has an answer here for the Hippie. Or he's just going to go all in aggressive, which of course is a tactic as well. It really fits his deck. There's an Iron Claw Orc here. I always mix the two up, by the way. I call it or Brass Claw Orc or Iron Claw Orc, so I'm sorry for that. Um, you know, of course, Brass Claw Orc is from the uh, Fallen Empires expansion, so I'm talking about the Iron Claw Orc here. And again, losing another Sarah Angel. And that is pretty painful because next turn he could have cast that Sarah Angel. And um, interesting here because Tom also could have chosen another route where he says, you know what, I'm going to keep my Gargoyle on uh, blocking duty because I'm hoping to draw into my land number five to actually cast. And there we see, oh, we see an Earthbind. That is really cool. I love that. Earthbind on Hypnotic Spectre. I mean, that card was made was made to kill a hippie. Uh, beautiful to see that. Anyway, I was talking about guard duty, but of course that doesn't work because of the IC manipulator. So it was a good decision for Tom to go all in with that attack. Um, really nice here, Earthbind on the Hypnotic Spectre, and there's an attack for four, but at least Tom is no longer losing cards, that's something. But another Hypnotic Spectre hitting the board here for Ron. It looks like Ron is really finding the right cards, but there's another Sarah Angel. That means that Tom had three Sarah Angels in hand. And this is actually pretty good, although end step run is going to tap here the Granite Gargoyle. And perhaps next turn he might tap down, attacking here first with Savannah Lines and Iron Claw Orcs. I wonder if next turn he's going to tap down the Sarah Angel hitting for six. Don't believe Ron has any cards in hand at the moment. Let's try to find out how that goes. Looks like he wants to attack for four, opening up the possibility for Tom to trade for his Sarah Angel. And that's exactly what he does. And Tom is willing to trade here. And there's another Sangir Vampire. And now the trade makes sense. Because he has another Sangir, but there is... A Swords to Plows here. So that does mean that Thomas or Ron's going to go up here to 12. And there is a big attack because Ron stepped out at the moment. Cannot use his Icy Manipulator. A big attack here from Tom. Wanting to keep the pressure on. Attacking here with Savannah Lion, Iron Claw Orcs, and the Granite Gargoyle. And I, I, I think Ron just has to take the damage here. I mean... 
he can block his he can use his hippie as a blocker but the blocks just don't seem ideal if he blocks the gargoyle Goyle thomas too red up to give it more um to give it plus zero plus O. Oh. And if he blocks the Iron Claw, you know, you don't want to trade a hippie for an Iron Claw. I guess he does. Okay, that's what, what what's actually happening. He doesn't want to take all the damage. And uh, he's now on eight. But remember, he does have the Icy and probably has something good in hand because he was willing to trade his hippie. But that was a pretty good exchange for, for Tom here. Tapping the Soaring in the Swamp, it seems. Or is he? He is in the tank at the moment. He's on 8 life. His opponent, Tom, is on 12 life. He has that Icy Manipulator. But it also means that if he wants to keep using the Icy, he cannot cast any spells greater than 4. Let's see what he's going to do here. It's really in the tank on this one. Untapping again his mana, looking at his hand again. And will Tom be able to take down game number two as well and advance to the finals? That's the question. Or will Ron stay alive here and manage to get a third game? And there is a Frozen Shade. One of my favorite cards. That art is just fantastic. Dan Frazier art. And um, like like many, many others, I'm, I'm always surprised to see it and, and realize that it doesn't fly. I think that's a, a bit of a design flaw, but okay. Beautiful art, beautiful card, and actually pretty strong in a mono black deck. Tapping down here the Granite Gargoyle. Is Tom gonna attack to trade the creatures? Is he going to offer the trade? He is gonna offer. Let's see what Ron's gonna do. And it looks like he's taking the damage. So he's going down to six here. Not willing to trade the Frozen Shade. And what will happen next? Really, really in the tank here. He knows that if he taps... The, the thing now is Frozen Shade gets for one black, gets plus one, plus one. So the more black mana you keep open, the better the Frozen Shade is. That's probably why he's putting two swamps on top there. He also needs one mana for his Icy Manipulator. So if... If he thinks I want to have enough mana to pump my Frozen Shade to block the Savannah Lions, he needs at least two Swamps. If he also wants to tap down the Granite Gargoyle, he, he needs one more land. So then his problem really is mana at this point in the game. He is deciding to tap four here, playing a Drain Life. And that means at least he goes up one life, he goes to seven. And he can tap down the Gargoyle. So at least for now, it looks like he's safe. And what Tom really needs is a Disenchant. There's a, there, okay. There's a Disenchant. In response, of course, he's going to tap down the Gargoyle. But this is bad news for Ron here. He's losing his Icy Manipulator. And remember, Frozen Shade does not have flying. He's on seven life. Can he find a solution for the Gargoyle? Tapping five. And what do we see? There's a Terror and an Hypnotic Spectre. This is a great turn for Ron here. And killing a creature from Tom and putting a threat on the table. But there is a Swords to Plowsiers on the Hypnotic Spectre. Makes sense. But don't forget the Frozen Shade. Ron has three Swamps on the table. That means it can turn into a 3-4 creature. And is that what's going to happen right now? Attacking, and boom! Three damage by the Frozen Shade. I'm, I must say I'm really happy seeing this. I'm really happy seeing a Frozen Shade being the center of the game here. And there we see a Gargoyle. But the Frozen Shade can actually be big enough next turn to keep attacking. And both of these players are now on nine. Really curious to see what's going to happen here. And an attack, probably an attack. I mean, it makes no... Well, I mean, if Tom wants to block, he's basically chump blocking with his Gargoyle. And if he's going to let it go, then he's basically taking possibly three damage. It looks like he's only taking one, though. So dropping here to eight, Ron's probably want to cast something in his second main. And, oh, a Royal Assassin. We haven't seen that one before. 
I'm liking this deck more and more. Frozen Shade, Royal Assassin, Netling Imp. Really nice run, very cool deck. And there we see a Benelish Hero from Tom hitting the table. But I do think Ron is kind of stabilized, especially with that Royal Assassin. Of course, we shouldn't forget that Tom has access to a lot of removal, but he's already played out, I believe, two swords to Plowsiers and a Lightning Bolt. We'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen next. Um, Ron attacking here again with the Frozen Shade. I think it just... It's just fantastic to see the Frozen Shade do so well. Now remember, Tom can block in a band here and he can pump the Granite Gargoyle to four, but yeah, exactly, he's gonna let it go. There's a Netling Imp, so he's got the combo on the table right now. Netling Imp, Royal Assassin. This is old school magic, I love it. So next turn, Netling Imp still having summoning sickness, but next turn he can do some business. I mean, if you're Tom right now, you're, you must be sweating. He needs a solution. Or, you know, he can wave his creatures goodbye. And Frozen Shade can actually win the game here for Ron because of that Natalie Imp Royal Assassin combination. Wow, wow, wow. Tom having two cards in hand and deciding to attack. And of course, Royal Assassin is here. And this is kind of desperation mode here for Tom. Or is it? Or is it? Will there be like an Earthquake for one? No, there is an Iron Claw Orc. Actually, an Earthquake for one with that board state would have been brutal because I think it was tapped out as well. Wow. That would have been brutal. But okay, it didn't happen, unfortunately, for Tom. I wonder if he has an Earthquake in his deck. I don't have the lists, unfortunately. And um, let's see what Ron can do. I mean, things are looking really, really good for Ron. He can choose to, to attack... And, and remember, Iron Claw Orc cannot block any creatures with power greater than, uh, than one. So if he pumps it up beforehand, it's, it's actually unblockable. But he's offering the trade, it seems. Well, it's not really a trade because he's now going to pump up his, his Frozen Shade. So Tom declares a block. In response, Ron's going to pump it to a 2-3 creature, killing the Iron Claw Orc. And that's that. And that means the Iron Claw is going to go away from the battlefield here. He can now also use his Royal Assassin actually to kill the um, to kill the Banala Shiro. It looks like he's going through his Graveyard, possibly wanting to cast an Animate Debt here. Or maybe even a Raise Debt. Who knows? Oh, a Raise Debt. I like it. I like it. Like, you don't see cards like Raise that often. Look at that art. I mean, isn't it fantastic? It's such an iconic card here. Getting back this Sengir Vampire, and that means that next turn, he's got uh, Sengir Vampire, Royal Assassin, and Netling Imp together on the board. That is incredibly cool. And Tom is saying, you know what? You've won this one. He's picking up the cards. Game number two is going to run. And that means that we are going to go to game number three. Game number three, and that means a third game here in the semi-finals of the Dwarven Warriors Cup. Oh, man. And both of these games were very, very entertaining. And uh, just a board state from Ron's deck. I mean, that is pure beauty. Frozen Shade, Netling Imp, Royal Assassin, playing a race debt to... Uh, get back a Sengir Vampire. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And um, I'm just hoping for similar board states. And of course, also really nice, uh, or, or also beautiful in game one to see Tom attacking with banding. I mean, it doesn't get more iconic than that. And there is a Sol Ring here being played by Tom. A good start for him. No Savannah line though, so no early pressure, it seems. We'll see what game two brings him. A Sol Ring for Ron as well. So both players opening really, really strong here. And will that mean that we'll see like Sarah Angels and Sengir Vampires pretty pretty quickly here in this game? Uh, we do see an Iron Claw Orc and no planes here from Tom. So hopefully for him he can he can find some planes soon, or or simply just play out red cards and just drawing his strongest red cards could be it could be a way to go as well. Tapping four here, there is that icy manipulator again. 
And let's see, what is Tom going to do? Of course, he's going to attack you for two, dropping Ron to 18. Does he have a land drop? He does not. He's just passing turn here. Things are not looking great. Remember, Ron can start using that icy if he wants to, for example, tap down the soul ring or tap down a mountain. It can just get really, really annoying when you're low on land to play against an icy manipulator. And Ron having access to five mana now. Is he going to cast, for example, a Sengir Vampire? That would be very troublesome for Tom because he has no white, so he has no access to swords at the moment. There we see a Royal Assassin. Also not ideal. Now Ron has the combination Icy Manipulator, Royal Assassin. Of course he's going to tap down the Iron Claw Orc. And yeah, things things are not looking great for Tom here. He needs to get first. It, I guess it starts with finding a basic planes. When he has basic planes, he can start casting cards like Disenchant and Swords. And now he also needs a Lightning Bolt. He really needs to get rid of that of that hippie ASAP. And there we see he's tapping a mountain here. And at least hey, Earthbind, beautiful play. Love that. Always love seeing that Earthbind on Hypnotic Specter. At least that's a good answer here from Tom. And of course, one of the downsides of... Oh, <laughs> oh look at that hand. It's all it's only white spells. White creatures, white everything. Oh, raise that here on the Hypnotic Spectre. Oh, I don't really want this match to end like this because we've had two beautiful games. Um, so really, Tom, I hope that you're right now going to draw into a basic planes... And okay, at least at least this is something a lightning bolt. It's that's that's actually a pretty good top deck here. I mean, you you'd rather have a basic planes, right? But this is the next best thing. And actually attacking with the royal now, that's funny. And that means Tom's gonna drop to 19. I mean, he still has a lot of life. He's not out of this game yet, but. He really needs a basic planes. And he's not finding a just passing turn here. And uh, I mean, Ron is, is just is given all the time and space he needs to build on his board. And it's really nice to see a royal, beautiful to see a royal in an icy. But I, I, yeah, Demonic Tutor, of course, why not? I really hope that uh, Tom is going to find a white mana here. And I wonder what Ron's going to look up here. I think a Mind Twist uh, would make sense. Also, maybe an Hypnotic Spectre to do it another way. What would other options be here for, for Ron? Maybe another Icy to tap down even more. Although, if he now wants to play an Icy as well, he cannot activate his other Icy, but... There are some options. I think he's going to go with Mind Twist, to be honest. Knowing Ron a little bit, but maybe not. We'll see. He's first going to attack for one. So dropping to 18. Then he's tapping down the Soaring. Okay, I guess he looked up something else. Maybe just a big creature like a Sengir. Or still the hippie. Ah, man. And Thomas to discard. Ah. Ah. You really, I mean, you just hope that he's going to find a plane and is able to make something of a match out of this. There's the Dark Ritual. Tapping more. What is he going to play here? Will we see a twist for seven? Yep. Mind twist here for seven. That means the hand's gone. And I think the game's gone and the match is gone. I think uh, Ron will probably win this. But let's see what happens. You never know. You never know. And uh, Tom's going here to 17. Stepping down the soul ring, of course. And then he finds the planes. Of course, then you find the planes. Oh, man. I'm Tom, I feel sorry for you, man. If I were you, I would start drinking right now. Seriously. I mean, but this is part of magic. It can be quite frustrating. And uh, you always seem to find the land you need after you've lost your entire hand or after, I don't know, after it happens. 
And now, of course, he's going to tap down the basic planes. Finding a lightning bolt, at least taking care of the royal assassin. And this is very frustrating because now he can start tapping down the, um, the planes. Then again, the positive thing about that is that if Ron can find a disenchant, he can at least play it in his upkeep. And there again is a beautiful frozen shade. Beautiful creature. And it can actually deal a lot of damage. Look at the amount of swamps that Ron has. There's also a swamp under that soul ring. So he can actually swing in for... Wow. He can, he, he can swing for six if he wants to. Is he going to do that? That would be pretty cool. Looks like he's just going to swing in for five. Keeping the swamp on top of his icy. Okay, so that means he's going to 11. Hard to see the dice right now, but he's going to 11. And he's again tapping the planes probably. That's that's the best move. In oh, there's a disenchant from Tom. So he's he's actually he's drawing not too shabby. His draws are kind of okay. It's just the fact that the, the mind twist. And I'm talking about after the mind twist, the draws after the mind twist. This is also pretty good. Oh, playing a dark ritual to keep the frozen shade alive, Ron. This is such a cool play. Wow. <laughs> sweet, 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 sweet. Of course, more bad news for Tom. But hey, Tom, you know, you have these games where just everything's bad news. It's better to just uh, have a drink and accept it, I guess. But we're still in the semifinals. You're still on 11. Who knows? Maybe you draw into a Wheel of Fortune. I think that's probably your best option here. And then you can try to start fresh. Attacking here, and now we can pump the frozen shade to six. Can make it a six seven, and that means Tom is going to drop to five if Ron decides to do so. We'll have to wait and see here. Yes, that's exactly what he does. And you know, I'm really happy to see frozen shade um, being played this often here in the semifinals. It's just such a beautiful creature. And that's it. That's game. That's game. What did he have in hand? An iron claw orc. Well, no, that's not going to do it because it can't block a creature with power greater than one. I wanted to say it could have just chum block. Look at that hand, by the way, full of removal from Ron. And that means Ron has won this semifinals. He's going to advance to the finals of the Dwarven Warriors Cup. And the finals will be uh, will be uh, aired right here on Timmy Talk. So that video will come up next week, Tuesday. So if you want to see the finals... Visit us again on Tuesday. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by liking this video, leaving a comment, share it on your socials, and also subscribe. So become a subscriber of Timmy Talks. That really helps. We're hoping to reach the 2,000 subscriber mark uh, pretty soon. I believe we're on uh, 1,900 something. So it would be really helpful if you would subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. And you can actually also sponsor the show financially by becoming a patron on Timmy Talks. There's probably a link popping up right now and you can click and you can visit Timmy Talks Patreon page. I would really appreciate it if you would have a look and then see is it something for you? Is it not something for you? Talking about Patreon, let's go to the end scroll and let's see the fantastic, amazing patrons of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Somebody can see.